Hey everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very, very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, welcome back guys. So y'all, we made it. Welcome to 2020. Um, this is exciting. Uh, I just really feel like this is going to be a really exciting year for all of us. Uh, not just an exciting year, but a really a, an exciting decade to come. So congratulations to all of us that made it through the hell that has been the last, I want to say two and a half years. I know for many of us, there was a massive activation that happened in the summer of 2017. I know that's when my activation really happened, <laughs> like big time. And then, you know, 2018, 2019, 2019 especially though, were periods of purging and healing and letting go of things that no longer serve us so that we can create space for that which we truly desire and what we really want in our lives. So welcome to that decade where it seems that this stuff is gonna be coming through. Yeah, I'm really, really excited. And also, I'm very excited for you guys to see the readings for this month, um, for January of 2020. Uh, as I was doing them, you know, they were all ugh, all coming out really great. Even though there were some, you know, challenging parts for certain signs or certain situations, ultimately, though, it's all a good thing. And it's all, um, Spirit is saying, even now, it's a process of healing and... Um, uh, process of healing that is taking place in order for us to really break free from the chains and do what it is we truly desire in our lives yeah so just a few things um i want to mention first if you are interested in getting a personal reading please don't hesitate to email me all of the information is in the description box below um just keep in mind that if you are looking for a private a personal reading your best bet is to just email me first as that's where I'm most likely going to direct you. You can hit me up on Instagram. That one is a pretty good option. I'm, However, I'm going to be asking you for your email address anyway, so you may as well just want to email me if you want to do that. Do not send any inquiries through Facebook. I will not be taking uh, private reading inquiries through Facebook. Yes, that is just not as a reliable source for communication at least in my opinion, as I've experienced moving forward, yeah? Email is always the best, but also Instagram is a good way too. You can find all of that information, the link to my Facebook page, the link to my my Instagram page, and my email address, along with all of the readings that I offer, their descriptions and prices in the description box below, yeah? Um, so for the readings this month, Oracle Guidance is coming again from the Earth Warriors Oracle. I really, really love this deck. This was a gift from one of our subscribers here. Thank you so much, Sam. I really love this deck. Um, and then the readings themselves are structured a little bit differently. First of all, I highly recommend that everybody watches the Capricorn reading as we are in Capricorn season right now, or at least as for the month of January. Um, a very happy birthday to all the Capricorns out there, by the way, and also a very happy birthday to the January Aquarians. Yeah. But um, I do recommend that people do watch the Capricorn reading because even if you don't have Capricorn in your chart, uh, it can give you a good amount of insight as to um, you know what you could expect during Capricorn season. Moving Moving forward, I do think I want to do that more often. I may actually just start doing a reading, a separate reading for the season that we're moving into because I kind of feel like, uh, you know, I don't want you guys' readings to get hijacked when it's supposed to be like, say, for Capricorn, but it turns into a big old collective reading. So that's the way it worked this time. Moving forward, I think I am going to do a separate reading because I think it would be good just to have a general reading just to see what's going on for the collective um, in terms of the different seasons that we're moving into. Also, for the readings, I have now included Jupiter in the situation. And it's funny because for the last like six months of 2019, I was kind of hearing myself say and want to say Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. I just never actually did it. Um, but starting this year, it is a thing. Um, Jupiter is a great way, like say if you're looking in terms of love, if you're looking for like a husband or your or like a masculine counterpart, you would look to your Jupiter sign. And conversely, if you were looking for like a wife or a feminine counterpart, you would look to your Venus sign. But also Jupiter is a planet of luck um, and, and finance and fortune and whatnot. And so if you kind of want to see like maybe how your career is going or whatnot, whatever, you might want to look at Jupiter. Yeah. So I just threw that in there. Um, in case you guys were interested, yes. Also, moving on into 2020, my channel is now 
up and eligible for memberships and with memberships come different tiers of perks and whatnot and so over the year of 2020 i am going to be rolling that out i have some planning to do with it i wish i could roll it out you know january 1st it's ready to go but that's really not realistic because i didn't get the email the notification about it until like mid-December when I was actually, I was in the middle of recording the last Twin Flame reading that I did for December, which is a great one. If you haven't seen it yet, absolutely go ahead and watch that. But I got the email during that reading. And so I'm now, I got to take some time to plan and see what I want to do, what kind of perks I want to offer um, and all that kind of stuff. But that is coming. I'm super, super excited about that. Um, I'm going to be going through a whole rebranding process during the month of, or during the year of 2020. So I'm super, super excited to bring you guys more content. And I would, if you're interested in becoming a member, I would highly recommend that you do that because then that's going to provide me with more financial stability in order to devote more time to the channel and to the readings and to you guys. And there are more things that I want to offer, like tarot uh, services, like count, um, uh, counseling services. If you're interested in learning the tarot, um, that might actually be a membership perk that I'll offer, like a you know for members only weekly like tarot masterclass or some something like that. You know what I mean? I mean it's just an idea, but um, if you are interested in membership, I would highly recommend that you consider doing so once it's available, because again, that will allow me more time um, and, to be able to devote. To the channel yes okay guys so i guess that's it i'm gonna stop rambling and let's just get into the reading yeah cool hello there cancer welcome to your reading for january 2020 thank you so very much for tuning in so i know i mentioned it already in the intro but i'm sure you guys can hear the jackhammering that's going on across the street I'm so I'm sorry about it, guys. Um, you know they're they're fully under construction across the street, and I really can't I, I I can't do anything about it. So I'm just gonna power through it. Hopefully, it's not too distracting for you. I'm going to do my best to remain distracted to remain un distracted. But to be honest, at at a certain at a certain point, you can just you can just turn, tune it out. You know what I mean? So sorry about that. All right, Cancer. Let's so let's get into the reading that we have for you here. So this, I've got your pre-shuffle energy so far, and it looks as if we definitely have a continuation um, of the narrative or the storyline that we had last month in December 2019, in which your reading was titled "Let Me Decide for You." Um, I mean, overall energy. You have the lovers here, and of all the cards in the deck, you know the lovers is representative of a choice is more so rep representative of a choice than really anything else maybe other than like the two of wands um but the lovers here is in a choice in terms of what is what is going to serve your highest good and some of you have i'm already picking up on the fact that some of you have already made this choice you've come to this decision so this definitely could be a situation in which we're, we have we have a continuation of the story from last month or from maybe if it's not last month then it's just like you know the, the narrative that came through in last month's message in terms of let me decide for you for some of you there has in fact been a choice that has been made um uh, for others of you you are probably entering into this space if you haven't necessarily gone through that yet if you are brand new to my channel and you didn't see the reading for december 2019 i highly recommend that you do so because it feels very relevant to this message right right now feels very relevant at least in the pre-shuffle feels very relevant to towards what happened last month okay <clears throat> So this choice that has been made or in, in or needs to be made um, is one of vice or over virtue, one of, um, you know, honoring yourself and what your heart truly wants rather than what the physical circumstances are, what the physical circumstances call for, um, what maybe societal views or some sort of conformity or keeping up appearance or going, keeping up with the status quo, whatnot, whatever. That in terms of this choice here is what is represented through the, through the guise of vice over virtue. Vice being the choices, the desires, the wishes, the, 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 the demands, the requirements of everyone else around you, everything external to you versus virtue being the choice of what your heart truly wants, what your higher self is guiding you towards, what would be ultimately what would serve your highest good. 
in the long run, in the grand scheme of things, in the bigger picture, okay? First tier of this energy is the Tower with Temperance and the Ten of Swords. So the Tower could be, could manifest itself for you or could look like one of two one of two main ways and it could very well be both but the first one is the tower could be the choice that has been made or a decision that has been made and now has action has been taken and something has been dismantled the second way of looking at this tower energy is a certain event or circumstance that opens your eyes to something illuminates something within you and thus the tower or the illusion crumbles and now you there is a choice to be made in, in relation to that that is then directly connected to the temperance energy that is here and of course the ten of swords the ten the temperance energy is um an energy of balance and what i feel like is happening here is whatever this tower represents this tower moment represents for you cancer whether it be a choice that you have made that you are now following through on taking action on or a certain circumstance or situation or whatnot whatever that blew the lid open on something and now you're seeing something differently or now you're you know it's like a situation in which you or your eyes are wide open and you can't go back to sleep or you can't pull the the, the the wool over your eyes the wool can't be pulled over your eyes any longer you can't um hide underneath the covers any longer like there's no hiding from this anymore whatever this tower energy represents for you here cancer it is all in an effort to bring greater balance harmony and union into your life temperance which has and thus is creating a situation in which a very painful or hurtful situation is now coming to an end the worst is now behind you um getting a little deeper into that energy a little more of a deeper focus you you have the five of swords with the hierophant and the high and the empress so in this case the five of swords does in fact represent whatever this destructive situation has been that's coming to a close with this ten of swords energy right so it was a lose-lose situation and in, in many cases this could be a situation in which cancer or maybe the cross watcher if you're resonating more with this other than the cancerian um whomever is making this change or has made this choice in their life they're, they're walking away from a certain situation that could have been very much an enabling type of situation because i'm getting a lose-lose energy with this five of swords here okay but someone is finally walking away from it walking away because if you look at this five of swords here it is depicted as one person standing there holding three swords in some sort of sense of victory i guess you could call it although i use that term loosely because in the in terms of the five of swords energy there are no winners here okay absolutely there are no winners here Re regardless if you've come out on top there are still some elements to you being on top or becoming or, or being um, um labeled as the victor here there are still some elements to make to this quote victory that make it very very negative okay uh, maybe even painful. You have to keep in mind that swords are sharp, yes, but they are also double-edged, right? And especially when it comes to that five of swords energy, this is a lose-lose situation. But in this card, you do have a depiction of one person standing there holding three swords, while the other, there are two other individuals who have kind of laid down their swords and are walking away. Now, yes, it could look like they have, they're walking away with their tail between their legs or with their leg like walking away kind of like in, a, in, an, in an energy of shame or defeat, but that's really not the main focus here. The focus here is leaving this destructive energy behind okay so someone is definitely in an energy of doing that uh, coupled with the hierophant energy here it's like someone is walking away from the status quo someone is walking away from the establishment someone is walking away from maybe a marriage a committed relationship a commitment you may have made what even if it doesn't have to be romantic this could be business wise but this commitment was under a very strong, controlling, conformist, mind control, maybe even a mental, emotional, abusive type of energy. Um, and someone is walking away from that, walking away from this, these chains of conformity into the arms of the Empress, which is an unconditionally loving energy. Um, this doesn't, uh, don't freak out because I'm not saying that if you were in a romantic partnership that your partner is, is necessarily walking away from you into the arms of someone that's way more compassionate or whatnot, whatever. If that was a trigger that just set you off, then there's something that you need to, to look at in that but that's not necessarily what i'm saying what i'm saying here is someone is releasing a sense of conformity and mind control and indoctrination in terms of uh, or, or you know, in order to experience more freedom uh and compassion and unconditional love with the empress now the empress can be a little bit of a smother type energy the empress can also be an enabler but she's only really she's only like that 
because she just loves and she loves everything and everyone for who they are and just wants them to be exactly who they are as they were created wants them to find happiness security and abundance within that state so yes the empress can be a little bit of an enabler but that's not the energy that i'm getting here especially if we were talking about with this five of swords energy someone being an enabler by staying in a certain situation or circumstance for too long there is a sense of unconditional love and acceptance for just you and your current state this is very much an energy of come as you are we're not going to require you to be anything more or anything less than who you are in this moment this energy of the empress is very nurturing very loving very caring and very regenerative you also could especially if you're walking away if you're choosing to not battle this situation any longer you are walking away from that into a like a bit of a cocooning phase which then brings us to the nine of wands okay you're walking into a sort of cocooning phase that's going to allow you to flourish and grow and heal from whatever circumstance you're moving your us uh, you're moving out of the nine of wands energy is asking you not to give in not to give up to persevere do not allow do not allow any of what you are walking away from or working on leaving in, in leaving behind you in the past do not allow any of it to try and suck you back in okay you have got to keep up these walls these boundaries that you have put in place that are only going to serve your highest good only going to serve your surviving and thriving uh your survival your 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 longevity your happiness your contentment your stability you have got to keep moving in this direction do not look back the nine of wands is saying to you whatever you do please do not look back because you've made the right decision here and you're moving in the right direction even though this transition from out of this five of swords energy might be pretty rough pretty tumultuous it might be pretty dangerous it could be fairly dangerous for some of you whether that be emotionally mentally maybe even physically although i highly i, I really hope it's not physical but if it is my prayers go out to you um and always ask for help if you need it but do not give up and please do not look back because you have absolutely made the right decision here okay excellent cancer excellent 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 i really like this so let's get into the rest of your reading here as this jackhammering continues across the street again i do apologize for that but there really is nothing i can do about it so we're just gonna power through yes we are going to persevere we are going to be like that nine of wands energy and we are not gonna give up we are not gonna let that stop us from having our monthly conversation with spirit yes excellent cancer one last shuffle and then we are gonna get started here we go hi spirit please make me a clear channel for the collective well, yes, for the collective, but for all Cancerians, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter, please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of January 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Cancer, I'm going to give this five shuffles and then we're going to get into the cards here. But one, the first thing that I want to say is that I am seeing purple and white for you, too. There is a sense, Cancer, for either for the Cancerian or for the cross watcher, whomever is walking away into no, shuffle number three, whomever is walking away from this five of swords energy, there is a sense of higher wisdom, deep understanding with the purple energy that I'm seeing, but then also a, a sense of moving back into a, some sort of form of purity or divinity here, uh, most likely purity with the white color that I'm seeing with that. It's like you're finally starting to understand who you are, um, what it is that you stand for, and any sort of tarnishing that that someone else, whether this be a significant other, um, a, a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, maybe a family member, maybe even a creative or business partnership, something like that. Whatever it is you're walking away from, many of you have this sense of polishing yourself or removing any sort of tarnish that could have that you could have acquired in the process of being in this circumstance. Okay getting back to your sense of purity, 
everybody has a sense of purity within and as we when we come down here into the three-dimensional world and we start tangoing with all the the rough and tumble bullshit that we <laughs> that we deal with here you know we get dirty we get muddy we get tarnished you know but we never but it's just that our sense of purity and divinity it just gets covered up we never actually lose it so as i'm literally seeing as someone is walking away from this five of swords energy the further you move down this path the more and more the dirt and the grime and the tarnish is removed from your being and you're allowed and and you're in a place to, to allow your sense of purity and divinity to shine forward this is really beautiful but this is another reason why spirit is saying with that nine of wands energy that came out in your pre-shuffle please do not give up please do not go back don't look back just keep moving persist yes number four <clears throat> And number five, for my Cancerians, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the month of January 2020. Let's get into this, Cancer. Oop. All right. Overall energy for you, the Knight of Wands. Okay, see, now this is what I, f I feel like this is an energy of an activation. Some of you might be going through um, a, an awakening at this time, so that definitely could be coming through what... what the purple energy that I'm seeing for you is, it could be coming through here. This is also moving forward with a sense of confidence, newfound self-respect, um, a newfound glow, a newfound pep in your step, all that kind of stuff. Do be careful with the Knight of Wands energy just because it can burn out fairly quickly. However, this does not mean that it's a bad energy to have at this time. I would absolutely work on take, using it to your highest advantage, but also Keep in mind that you want to pace yourself because, again, this Knight of Wands energy can burn out very, very quickly. So if you find that you're, 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 the, the energy is really starting to like to blaze, you might want to find a way to kind of temper that a little bit to maybe reserve some of that fuel that you have for that fire so that you can get the, as the, the most so that you can get the most bang for your buck, so you, that you can get the most mileage per gallon. Make sense? Okay. Underneath the Knight of Wands, you have the Ten of Wands. And I do really feel like this, the, whatever the Knight of Wands represents here for you, however it's representing in your life, I do feel like it's giving you the fuel that you would need to burn away all this superfluousness, burn away all of the burdens, the extra burdens that you've been carrying for so long that are no longer necessary, or maybe never even, were never even yours to carry to begin with, right? But you being that Cancerian, being that loving and compassionate energy that family oriented energy that that energy that just wants to provide and be there for the people that you love you've taken on way too much but what i'm seeing here with this knight of wands is this you have the energy to burn all of this away and to remove the burdens from your life and to finally be free or be freer than you have been in the past or just maybe in a long time underneath the ten of wands you have the king of pentacles very interesting i do like this underneath the king of pentacles is death Excellent. So what this is saying here, um, Cancer, is I, I really feel like there is a sense of coming coming back to you, coming back to who you truly are, the, um, especially with whatever it is that you've been through, maybe with this Five of Swords energy, this this combativeness, the, 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 the tomfoolery, the fuckery, the, the destructive elements, the, 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 the lose-lose situation. Ultimately, it served a really great purpose, and that purpose was to help you get, gain more solid... Um, foundation within yourself. The King of Pentacles energy is giving me a feeling of you just being very strong, very stern, very uh, having found, gotten this sense of understanding who you truly are underneath the surface, um, being well manifested. I'm just getting a sense of just being very well grounded and very understanding of who you are, what it is you stand for, um, and having a very strong foundation. And from that place, then this sense of this sense of, of death or transformation is now able to take its uh, run its course in your life okay sorry my camera doesn't seem to want to cooperate it's just having so many problems right now okay that's better all right so um i really like this energy for you cancer there is definitely a transformation here and now if you may not if you don't necessarily feel like this 
king of pentacles energy just yet this well manifested grounded stable and secure very but also very much secure in who you are as a physical being in this moment this is what you're moving towards okay this is what's coming forward towards you especially if everything that we've talked discussed so far in the reading is resonating with you this is exactly where you're moving into so this death energy could be the energy of transformation that is allowing you to step into this energy right here right now of the king of pentacles okay Excellent, Cancer. So let's get into the rest of your reading here. First half, second half of the reading. You could look at this as the first half, second half of your month. Take it as it resonates. Yes, sorry, I'm trying to make sure Cher's face isn't covered as much as possible. Okay. <laughs> okay, anyway, first set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reading here, Cancer, you have the Six of Pentacles. Reciprocity is the name of this game. But I do really feel like what this Six of Pentacles represents for you, Cancer, maybe even the Cross Watcher. Again, this is a general reading. Take it as it resonates. But from whomever is resonating with this, what I really feel like here is you are in an energy of learning to reparent yourself. In a sense, I'm definitely getting an energy of reparent, reparent, reparenting yourself. But I'm also getting an energy of the focus being on reciprocity between you and the other people in your life and the relationships that you have in your life. Um, I am getting a sense of movement towards this. So there, you might be shifting your energies around. You may be redelegating who or what you give to how much you give to this to this circumstance and maybe even why i'm hearing why is a very big reason as to uh, or a very very big focus for you so this shifting that you might be experiencing right now cancer is you questioning your motives or questioning the reasons well yes that would be your motive but the 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 Questioning your motives in terms of why you may be uh, giving to certain situations, circumstances, relationships, how much you give, whether to give at all or not, okay? Um, and also questioning your motives, or the, other, the motives of others as to, okay, you're doing X, Y, and Z for me. Why? What is it that you want from me? Now, if you are in that energy, I feel like that's coming from a place of skepticism, of um, a very strong defensiveness. It's coming kind of from that nine of wands energy it would be because you're coming out of a situation in which there was reason to question and now maybe you're hypersensitive to it temper that a little bit there's nothing wrong with being a little bit skeptical as to why someone might be treating you in a certain way why someone might be really trying to uh, kiss up to you or something like that but uh, but don't let that go too far don't be overly cynical don't be overly questioning don't be overly um skeptical because that could present that just could be uh, a limited that's a limited mindset that could really get in your way in the future but again a, a healthy dose of discernment is definitely something that you might really want to <laughs> keep intact here yes uh the six of pentacles is coupled with ah the three of cups there you go there's that social atmosphere there's that social aspect to it you're very hyper aware of the people around you and why they may be treating you a certain way or why they do certain things that they do even if it doesn't have anything to do with you or it's not directly directed towards you you could be just what in that energy right now cancer of like sitting on the sidelines and just kind of observing people and recognizing how things are how things may be imbalanced or definitely balanced like how things may have be out of balance and how things may be in a set, have a sense of balance and harmony between them and especially if you're just observing you're probably I, I feel like there are a lot of you right now that are just are in the process of observing things and observing other people's relationships and kind of um applying what you've learned in this past this recent situation that you're coming out of applying what you're learned those principles to what you're seeing uh, in the relationships between others, not necessarily passing judgment, but at the same time, kind of working with your sense of discernment, almost kind of like practicing what you've, you've experienced and putting into practice what it is that you've learned here. Okay. That's a very good energy to be in cancer. I'm not going to lie. Second set of surrounding energies for you in the first half of your reading. Ah, yes. Good old judgment. This is definitely keeping in line with you putting what you've learned into practice here. You really kind of waking up, listening very closely to the universe, to the signs and the synchronicities that you see and experience in your life, paying very close. I'm just what I'm getting from this, this judgment energy here for you, cancer, or maybe the cross watcher. Again, it doesn't matter. Just take it as it resonates. But 
for whomever is resonating with this, for whomever I'm speaking to in terms of this situation, what I'm getting from this judgment card is you are very being very attentive to what the universe is trying to show you, teach you, and say to you. And again, taking what it is that you've learned and experienced and putting it into practice. Only, if only cognitively at this point. It's like an energy of you like getting a, a bunch of information from spirit, especially with that purple energy that I was picking up on from in the beginning of your reading here in, as I was channeling for you, taking what spirit has provided to you and now just trying to wrap your head around it. Now just trying to make cognitive or, or conscious sense of it before you start to really put that into physical practice, the physical practice of action, okay? Very good. Judgment is coupled with damn, the <laughs> seven of pentacles. I mean, shit, sometimes I really scare myself when I'm doing these readings and I get one card and I get the whole message and then the, 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 you know, the second card comes out and just confirms it. But the seven of pentacles here is that energy of checks and balances, is that harvest energy. It's like, okay, what have I learned here? What do I have in front of me? How did I get or how did I receive or how did what I have in front of me grow? What is the process that I went through in order to receive this harvest? Now, with that understood, where do I want to go in the future? Do I want to continue with this type of harvest? Yes or no? You take your respective paths from there. And if yes, okay, continue. It's 1.11 on the counter. On, I'm sorry, on the time. It's 1.11 at, at, in the afternoon for me right now. I just wanted to point that out for you. Or if this harvest is not something that you do want, okay, what do I want and how do I get there? How do I change my focus? How do I change my direction? And again, this is an energy of working closely, hand in hand, in tandem with the universe and the higher wisdom that you have kind of awakened to at this point in time in your, in your, in your life, okay? Wow, this is really, really beautiful, Cancer. I really love this. Okay, so your challenge in the first half of your reading here is the Nine of Pentacles, independence. Your challenge is, especially for some of those Cancerians out there that are coming out of some sort of codependency or, or lack mentality, what spirit is, spirit is saying, the challenge for you right now is to assert your independence, maybe even assert your dominance. And that dominance really is only focused on or really should only be allocated to your life, your domain. You are the dominant energy in your life. And if someone or something cannot resonate with that, cannot harmonize with that, then you have to be okay with saying to them, you have no place here. There is no, there's no hate, there's no animosity. And I say this from a place of unconditional love for you, but I'm also saying this from a place of unconditional love for myself. And if you cannot find, if, if we cannot find a way for our energies or our, our um, environments or our realities to coexist, to harmonize, then there is no place for us to be in each other's lives, period. Like, let's just call a spade a spade. Let's not beat around the bush here. I love myself enough to know that you need to be cut off, and that's just the final word. That's your challenge here, Cancer. And for some of you, at least in the first half of the reading, and for some of you that have been in this code, really strongly codependent energy of needing that validation from the external source, sources or circumstances, being in that type of energy to build a, a family structure or, or a, a friendly, a friend network or a social network or a social environment that was really only there to help validate yourself, this is going to be a really strong challenge for you because this nine of pentacles is asking you to find validation within. Come on, focus. There we go. Find this validation within, Cancer. Your validation and your happiness can really only come from within if it is going to be solid, grounded, and, and in, any, in any way substantial. If it's going to last in any way, it has to come from within. It cannot be validated from your external circumstances. You will only set yourself up for failure if you require your happiness and your sense of validation to come from the external. Yes? Okay. So, the Nine of Pentacles is coupled with... <laughs> Yikes! The Knight of Swords. I mean, for some of you, your challenge is going to be expressing or asserting your independence in a tactful way. <laughs> and I'm laughing at that because 
I'm laughing at it, number one, because it's freaking funny. But number two, it's an energy of the pendulum swinging. So where you may have been way too soft, we'll call it, like there's there's nothing wrong with being soft, but where you've been too, we'll say malleable, way too mutable, where you've allowed yourself to be a doormat, to be some sort of martyr or whatnot. Now the pendulum is swinging the other way and you you may come across as super aggressive, maybe even narcissistic at times or or super egotistical and that's not that's really not what it is in truth you are just making up for lost time in asserting yourself so just be careful i'm not saying to not be your own knight in shining armor your own guard dog your own guardian or whatnot whatever and i fully recognize that for those of you that are really in this energy of experiencing the opposite end of that pendulum swing I say fully embrace this, even if it leads to circumstances where you get, you have an argument with someone or you come across way too aggressive and someone completely like cuts you off and starts, you know, talking all kinds of shit about you or whatnot, whatever. It doesn't matter. Ultimately, I, I, I encourage you to fully embrace this because it's going to help you learn how to effectively defend yourself, defend your, stand your ground and, and enforce your boundaries without being too egotistical or aggressive about it. So if you do find yourself in a place where, you know, you're, you're asserting yourself or you're, you're maintaining your boundaries and it becomes a little more aggressive than you might have intended, don't beat yourself up about it. It was necessary for you to, to, to really feel out how far to push or how much, how strong to be, okay? I, I really, I'm really feeling an energy to encourage you, whomever this is for, to really fully experience that pendulum swing for what it really truly has to offer you, okay? <laughs> okay, cool. Your closing message or potential outcome. I did not, I, I did not get your attention. Here's what I found. I really was not trying to get your attention, Google. So maybe you should like stop listening, stop being so damn nosy. Okay, anyway. <laughs> okay, anyway, closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, Cancer, you have. Ah, yes, the Ten of Pentacles. So the Ten of Pentacles is an energy of a completion of a cycle, in my opinion, especially in this realm of um, university that you can call life on earth. The Ten of Pentacles is an energy of completing a lesson and moving on to your next course or being ready to, I feel like for you, Cancer, if that is the energy that you're in, you are gearing up to move towards the next cycle or the next lesson in your life, okay? For others of you, this has to do with family. And I feel like you are setting yourself up to be in a position to, to generate or start manifesting or start building the life you want to live in terms of having a family, okay? The Ten of Pentacles is also an energy of longevity, legacy, and being in something for the long haul. And I do feel like for many of you that are really family focused right now, in terms of like starting, building, developing a family, you really are long-term oriented. And you may even be in an energy of being excited for what the future has to bring in terms of the family that you are looking to build. Um, especially in terms of the fact that you've now found this new sense of independence and self-worth with this nine of pentacles energy here but also that is also directly connected to this king of pentacles energy which very much is the husband and and father um of the 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 court cards right um so you could either be if you're the masculine here or if you are a male that is more masculinely oriented you could really be in the mindset of setting yourself up to be that father husband patriarch energy if you are a woman and are more in that masculine energy then it's the same thing obviously you were you won't physically be a father but you can you can conduct yourself even even as a woman you can conduct yourself in terms of that masculine or fatherly type energy right and now if you are now if you are the feminine here or if you are a woman that's more in the feminine energy or if you are a man that's more in the feminine energy you are in the process of cultivating some sort of circumstance that would bring in this masculine father husband figure okay shaping yourself to be the type of um, feminine counterpart or wife to 
or embodying the energies to to be that feminine counterpart or wife to whomever this king of pentacles this ideal uh masculine counterpart or husband would be for you it's like setting yourself up to be that wife or counterpart and being very much in the mindset of going uh being in the long haul like this is not something that's just gonna whoop, happen overnight like or at least you're not expecting it to you're not in that mindset you're fully aware that if it's going to have that value that you're really seeking it's going to take time and you are very much focused on being okay with that and 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 embodying that following through with that okay excuse me i'm gonna cough <clears throat> okay the Ten of Pentacles is coupled with the Four of Swords. There you go, okay? So this is actually, this really could be a planning phase. You might really be in this phase right now of saying, okay, looking down the line, looking off into the future, what is it that I truly want? Especially with this Judgment and Seven of Pentacles energy here. Um, I, I really feel like throughout the month of January, um, it's speaking in terms of time, even though we all know here on my channel that I really don't try to predict or I really don't try to put a timeline on things, um, but from the energies that I'm feeling, the way this is flowing here, I really do feel like you could spend a good amount of January, if not all of January, in the process of contemplating this. And honestly, I would say if the more time you can take with this, the better, because many of you are in this energy of leaving something, something behind you okay and closing out a cycle and moving forward in some new way in your life and the more time that you can take to rest and meditate and allow yourself to surrender to the process and allow yourself to release all of the energies that you've been wrapped up in in the past and release the energies of the closing cycle that's that you're now moving out of in order to create space for the new and contemplate the new and maybe try and plan for the new and just focus on what it is you truly desire and what's really going to make you happy and focus on your feeling place there the more time you can take with that the better off your your manifestation or even your path towards that manifestation will be okay just keep that in mind. Don't try to rush this cancer. Even though you are a cardinal sign um, and cardinal signs are very action oriented, really like to move and tend to move very quickly. There is no reason to rush this. Okay, cancer? Absolutely not. Excellent. Let's get into the second half of your reading here. First set of surrounding energies for you, cancer. You got Ooh, wee, look at that ace of pentacles. I am seeing a proposal, an offer of commitment, um, a, a brand new start. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to come through in January. For some of you, it could. For others of you, I feel like it would be too fast. You have, you really have a good amount of work to do in order to really close out this cycle for yourself that you're moving out of, to give yourself a, a time to acclimate to, to stand in your independence, to really reclaim your energy back, and then to start the new cycle, okay? But I do see this new cycle, regardless of when it starts, it's happening. It is absolutely happening for you in this Ace of Pentacles. This is that seed. So in January, potentially, or whenever, as this cycle, as you move through these energies for yourself on whatever timeline you're on, this, whatever this is, this energy is speaking to for you, this is about generating the seed of your new life or your new cycle and then planting that seed, okay? But yes, for some of you, this Ace of Pentacles is an offer of commitment, whether you wanna make that offer of commitment to someone or someone wants to make that offer to you. Either way, if that is truly what you desire, especially in terms of a family, that is what you are setting yourself up for in this current energetic phase, yes? Ace of Pentacles is coupled with the Two of Pentacles. Okay, good. So this is good. This is progress, you guys. So and especially in terms of having decided what it is that you wanted or moving into this new energetic space of being able to plant your seed to, 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 to allow it to germinate and to allow it to grow, there is an energy of keeping the balance here. But this balance that you are striking with this that is represented by the Two of Pentacles is directly related to caring for and nurturing this new reality that you are giving birth to okay so whatever balance you are working on striking it's like it's like um it's this is like a mother or a parent a, a family a mother and father or a father whether you're a single father or a single mother or if you have your your if you're if you're or if it's a partnership and you're working together it doesn't matter this is about like this is like having a newborn and then shaping everything in your life 
in the guise of protecting, caring for, and nurturing that newborn. This newborn could absolutely be an actual physical human being, or it could just be the new life that you're setting off on, that you are embarking upon, that you are creating for yourself. This Ace of Pentacles, this seedling is your newborn. And with this Two of Pentacles energy, you are it would behoove you to make sure that everything in your vi environment is either going to provide for the care and the nurturance of this of this new energy or at least not going to get in the way not going to hinder the development the growth process that this ace of pentacles represents for you okay excellent now i'm not saying that i i, I do want to make this very clear i'm not saying that everything in your environment has to directly benefit this newborn but I, but what it had the one the one stipulation is that it cannot interfere with this newborn energy absolutely cannot the moment that it poses any sort of threat of interference it needs to go or it needs to be cordoned off it needs to be isolated it needs to be quarantined whatnot whatever we will protect this at all costs that's kind of what this energy is saying that might be a little a little more dire than is necessary but at the same time a newborn is is in need of extreme defense in many cases right because there are a lot of energies that may come around that may try to sabotage it and you don't want that to happen excellent second set of surrounding energies for you cancer in the second half of your reading the knight of pentacles slow and steady progress this is a beautiful energy oh my god look at all this pentacles energy you have here cancer there is a really a brand new life material representation maybe even a new career i don't know take it as it resonates but there i mean your energy right now is all about setting yourself up for the new is all about manifesting the physical the, you know the, the some, growing something physically in your life whether that be an actual a child or just a new life for yourself this new cre i mean this knight of pentacles energy is your best friend here this knight of pentacles energy is like you know what we're ready to go i completely know where you're going here i know all the steps that we need to take i will be your guide i will be your best advocate all you got to do is just follow my lead and everything will work out perfectly I will assure that. Now, I do want to say, in saying everything is going to work out perfectly, it may not work out perfectly in sense of what your ego thinks it might, sh it might how it should work out or wh wh how it should look. However, in terms of um, universal, universally, like what the universe has in store for whatever it is you wish to manifest or whatnot, whatever, it's all going to work out perfectly. You just have to go through with it step by step. And also in terms of that, you've got to release any sort of attachments or expectations of when things should happen, why things should happen, how things, how something should look. In terms of that, if you were to release all of that up to the universe, release all the gory de details up to the universe and just focus, focus on the feeling, um, the feeling reality of what it is you wish to desire in your life, and you just follow through with the guidance that you get, I assure you that it will in fact work out perfectly. Okay? Regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the lumps and the bumps and the hiccups and the roadblocks and the and the bumps in the road and all that stuff, it's all part of the plan. It's all part of the process. You just got to trust. Yes? I really like this Knight of Pentacles energy for you, Cancer. Knight of Pentacles is coupled with... Oh, there's the Emperor right there. You see? Okay, so this is, this is very good. This is very, very good, Cancer. This Emperor energy is balanced and grounded and is healthy. This is not the type of em Emperor energy that's looking to control for conformist reasons. You're moving, your, you're moving out of that energy, okay? So whatever you learned in the past in terms of overly controlling, over, overly dominant, uh, masculine energy or whatnot, whatever, if that resonates with you, you have learned your lesson there. And now you're moving into a space where you can be you either can be this controlling figure or you can be in the presence of this type of controlling energy and not necessarily get triggered by it because you understand the value of this. This emperor energy is coming through here in relation to this knight of pentacles because it's stating, it's reiterating what I mentioned here with the ace of pentacles and the two of pentacles. The emperor is that ultimate protector, okay, and is going to keep certain structural or certain elements in, in place, a certain structure in place, but only to make sure that the same safety and the longevity of your your goals and your endeavors and whatever whatever it is you want to grow we'll say in terms of this this analogy we have going this child that is maybe either in gestation or has just been born into the world 
this emperor energy is that controlling factor, that dominant factor that is saying we are going to keep certain things in place only to make sure that our creation, our manifestation is able to, is given a fair chance to survive and to thrive. That is the only control and dominance that this em en uh, that this uh, emperor energy has over the situation. Otherwise, you're in the hands of the empress that came out in the pre-shuffle, which is that loving, unconditional, unconditionally loving, nurturing energy that is giving that is that is nurturing your seedling or your 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 child into good health and happiness and contentment the the emperor is the physical structure surrounding that circumstance that is providing the stability for that empress nurturing energy to nurture whatever it is that's being born okay and with that knight of pentacles it's like nope we are going to do this step by step and we are not going to rush anything we are going to give you the time that you need to make sure that all goes well for you cancer this is amazing. <laughs> your challenge in the second half of your reading here, Cancer, you have, ooh, there you are, the chariot. So I guess your challenge here is not moving too quickly. I kind of want to say it might be the alignment, but okay, so maybe your alignment might get a little bit challenging because maybe you may come up against um, some circumstances in the future that might kind of cause you to question your alignment you may there may be a shift in your alignment as well you know in terms of the circumstances that you experience that maybe may change some sort of mindset for you or something like that but if that happens i don't feel like that's a risk um to your circumstance if that does happen it's only it's happening for the greater good blah blah, blah whatnot whatever but i guess the, the greatest challenge here for you cancer is this in this chariot energy is just staying patient staying focused remaining in the flow going with the flow and not trying to rush and i just feel like if you do kind of get this sense of god i just want to i just want to get going it's because you're balanced and you're passionate about this it's almost as if you're finally on the path that you think that you may have always wanted to be on and you're kind of recognizing that and you're so you really want you're like really gung-ho about it. it's like oh man i'm so fucking excited like let's get to this man this is great Excellent. Just temper that, okay? Keep that night of what I said about that night of wands energy in the forefront of your mind. Don't allow yourself to burn out, okay? If you find that that the things are starting to burn too hot, um, kind of pull back, turn the fuel down a little bit, and just to res reserve some of that fuel, some of that gasoline, some of that you know, some of that some of that drive, that inspiration. You don't want to burn out, but especially in this in this energy here whether you're in this phase of the process right now or whether you are you're you're seeing it coming in the future being in this phase is actually probably only going to fuel your fire even more because now you're actually putting things into practice you're actually taking action you're actually taking those steps you are actually seeing things start to manifest or start to come together even if it's the smallest little bit you can see it start to come together and from there you can start to see the bigger picture and that's probably only going to drive you more that's probably only going to make you want to move faster even quicker but just temper that okay you're in alignment you're definitely in alignment so don't don't allow yourself to get scared or anything like that also okay the chariot is coupled with Ah, that queen of wands, confident and magical, confident and magical. This is beautiful. Oh, I really, I'm, this is one of those moments where I'm really kind of struggling to see how this is a challenge for you. <laughs> Because this is such a beautiful energy, Cancer. You, I mean, you have the chariot with the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands is vibrant. She's sexy. She's she's uh, charismatic. She's a social butterfly. She she loves everybody. She just wants to talk to everybody. She just wants to, you know, she's the life of the party. And whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. Whether you're a more of a masculine energy or a feminine energy, it really doesn't matter. This is just what that Queen of Wands emb embodies. So I guess this would be a challenge for you because then there's a, 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 a the possibility that you might go, you know, overzealous, maybe overstep some boundaries every once in a while, maybe, you know, maybe try to rush something, but it's really just because you're so excited and you're feeling so confident. The challenge also with the Queen of Wands I can see now might be remaining in a sort of receptive energy, even though you do have this very cardinal energy, very uh, movement-oriented energy, action-oriented energy, you could have a, a chance, uh, 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 um, 
a challenge, a challenge could be for you in remaining in the receptive mode and, and not trying to take too much action too quickly, not trying to overstep boundaries in the sense of making moves before you're really even ready to. Overzealousness could be the challenge here. So but also i feel like this is a really good challenge to have and if this is if this is a part of your challenge then it's also part of a lesson in in remaining keeping that balance and in, remaining in that balance and alignment yeah cancer closing message or potential outcome for you in the second half of your reading here you have the high priestess okay so what the high priestess is representing here for you is the unknown for sure i mean this is the counterpart to the Hierophant that came out in the pre-shuffle here. So for some of you, you're, you're going to have to become, you're learning a lesson in becoming comfortable with the unknown. There's a lot that's that's hidden to you. I mean, even though you have this idea, you have the seed that you're planting or has been planted and maybe now is starting to like germinate or is starting to sprout, break break up from the, the um, break, break ground, you know, it's still not exactly sure to you what this is going to grow into what it's actually going to look like there's a sense of uncertainty here but there's also with that uncertainty comes a sense of wonder and excitement that really could even drive your passion that much more you know what i mean just because of the way things are coming together and you do have a lot more faith in the universe and and you're just excited to see what this grows into that's really beautiful cancer but you do have that that wisdom to understand that whatever is coming down the pipeline for you, whatever the universe is, is developing for you in terms of what it is you desire, it's going to be beautiful either way. So you really don't even have to worry about that, which also is going to add to your sense of wonder and excitement here. The High Priestess is coupled with oh the seven of swords yeah but this is not a good this is not a bad thing you guys the high pre this is kind of what i'm what i was picking up on here the unknown secrets things happening underneath the surface incognito even like this is just you don't necessarily know what's coming but you can sense that it's something good don't allow yourself to to sabotage yourself by thinking or or fearing the unknown that thinking that whatever is hidden within the unknown is potentially bad or something like that that is a way that you can absolutely sabotage yourself and the manifestations the energies that are trying to come forward towards you just keep in mind that whatever the universe has in store for you is always going to serve your highest good no matter what okay beautiful cancer wow this i mean this is almost an hour long <laughs> Anyway, let's get into your Oracle Guidance now, Cancer. Whoops. All right, from a Cancerian Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the month of January 2020. Let's see what we've got for you, Cancer. From a Cancerian's Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Just this top one here. Card number 25. Aloha Ke Akua. Blessings of the Supreme Being. This makes me think of the fifth element with the Supreme Being. <laughs> I really don't feel any other ties to that movie and this reading other than the fact that it uses the term Supreme Being. If you can find one, if <laughs> there is a similarity between that and your life, then go ahead and take that message. But when I see Supreme Being, the first thing I think of is the fifth element. But that's mainly because it's one of my absolute favorite movies of all time. Anyway, <laughs> enough about me. Let's get into your Oracle guidance here. So, Aloha, Aloha Ke Akua, card number 25, which does boil down to a seven, which is uh, luck and spiritual wisdom. Blessings of the Supreme Being. Aloha Ke Akua, the divine is love. The supreme being from which all life emanates manifests a blessing for you. The realm of heart, I'm sorry, the realm of the heart is love's temple. When you enter the heart, you gain access to the great one and to the mana, the power, authority, grace, and magnetism to manifest your divine destiny. Trust in what is meant for you. Surrender doubt and disconnection in favor of love and respect for the Great One, and you shall live your true destiny with joy in your heart. Love can and will conquer all. In a reading, this card says, a blessing is coming to you now. 
Things do not need to be complicated. When you are confused, when you are confusing yourself with too many variables, too much information or fear and doubt, focus on filling your heart with love and let everything else go. The Great One will handle all matters in your life if you open your heart to divine guidance and let go with faith. This will not make you passive. Rather, it will allow you to feel inspired to take only the most helpful actions. This oracle indicates an answered prayer and that the Divine One has you covered in a situation of concern to you. You are healing and deepening your relationship with the Divine, especially in terms of being in this energy of allowing the unknown to just be that, to be unknown and going with the flow and just allowing the universe to bring forward whatever it deems necessary or whatever it is that is in alignment with what you desire to manifest. That is absolutely helping you strengthen your bond with the divine, okay? And the universe, spirit, whatever, however, a source, God, creator, however you want to describe it. All right, Cancer, so there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you'd like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below. But with that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic month, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of January. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye!